Welcome to this video about service of the Danfoss SVA shutoff valve. In this video, we'll give you some tips how to do an efficient service of the SVA shutoff valve, which you see an example of here, to ensure safe and reliable valve operation and minimum service costs. Therefore, we will show you how to correctly isolate the valve from the system and drain it before service, how to correctly backseat the valve, how to correctly press and equalize the packing gland if needed, how to correctly replace the packing gland if needed. We will also show you how to correctly replace the flat gasket if needed, how to correctly replace the cone assembly if needed, and for sizes DN80 to 200 only, how to correctly replace the backseat seal if needed. And finally, how to correctly recharge the valve and connect it to the system. Before servicing the SVA shutoff valve, it is very important to do the following steps. Isolate the valve from the system, drain refrigerant from the valve, check and ensure that there is no refrigerant pressure before disassembly of the valve. The SVA shutoff valve is identified by the red color and the valve is available with angleway or straightway valve housing, as seen here. The valve comes with various connections, standard or long bonnet, and with cap or hand wheel, as also seen. In this video, we demonstrate the service of the SVA S32 angleway valve with standard bonnet and cap, but the service procedure is similar for all valve variants. The service of the valve is done with the valve located on a workbench, as seen here, but the procedures of valve disassembly, valve parts replacement, and valve reassembly are the same for the valve located in a refrigeration system. Here you see the tools needed for the service of the SVA shutoff valve. This includes torque wrench, hammer, spanners, punch, screwdrivers, allen key. So let us get started with the valve service. Before disassembling the SVA shutoff valve, we recommend to backseat the valve to release the valve cone pressure acting on the valve housing seat. This will make it easier to loosen and remove the bonnet bolts and remove the bonnet from the valve housing. Therefore, firstly, if mounted, carefully loosen the cap. Ensure that there is no possible build-up refrigerant pressure behind the cap. If there is pressure, then this is released during careful unscrewing and removal of the cap. During removal of the cap, ensure that the drain hole in the cap is not blocked. Then rotate the spindle counterclockwise either with a suitable tool or alternatively with the mounted hand wheel to lift the comb from the seat. Keep rotating the spindle until the valve is fully open. If mounted, remove the hand wheel from the spindle. In some cases, refrigerant pressure forms and is trapped behind the packing gland of the SVA shutoff valve. This refrigerant pressure can be equalized by slowly loosening the packing gland. Therefore, carefully rotate the packing gland counterclockwise until possible trapped refrigerant pressure is released through the packing gland, as seen here. Then, if the packing gland needs to be replaced, keep rotating it counterclockwise and carefully remove it from the spindle and bonnet. If service of the packing gland is not needed, then just keep it located in the bonnet during further service. To remove the SVA bonnet, firstly loosen the bonnet bolts. Remove two of the bolts, leaving two bolts partly fixed to the valve housing as a safety measure, should there by accident still be refrigerant pressure inside the valve. Carefully loosen the bonnet slightly from the valve housing, ensuring that there is no refrigerant pressure inside the valve. Then remove the remaining two bolts. Finally, carefully lift and remove the bonnet from the valve housing. Please note that if the flat gasket for the bonnet is damaged, then carefully remove it from its location. The gasket might stick to either the bonnet or the valve housing, so be careful during gasket removal not to scratch the surfaces of these parts where the gasket sticks to. To service the cone assembly, first rotate the cone screw counterclockwise with a suitable sized allen key to remove it from the cone assembly. Then, to make the cone replacement easier, Remove the cone assembly from the bonnet by rotating the spindle counterclockwise. Do not remove or service the dark colored grease between the spindle thread and the bonnet. In case the grease has been contaminated with dirt, particles or water, then the complete bonnet must be replaced. To disassemble the cone assembly, firstly remove the bearing balls inside the cone assembly through the cone screw hole, this by rotating the cone 
while fixing the spindle. Keep rotating until all bearing balls are removed. You can see the number of bearing balls specified here. Then carefully pull the spindle out of the cone and remove the disc spring which is located inside the cone. Please note this special for sizes DN80 to 200 only. The valve back seat is a special PTFE ring. If this is damaged, then it must be replaced. Therefore, screw the spindle out of the bonnet. Carefully remove the PTFE ring and mount a new one in the angled contact surface directly inside the opening in the bonnet. Avoid folding and damage to the PTFE ring or damage to the contact surface at the top of the valve during assembly. You can use different available service kits to replace one valve parts during reassembly of the SVA shutoff valve. Here you see the available service kits for the SVA S32 valve. These are inspection kit, which includes gaskets and alloy ring, repair kit, which includes gaskets, alloy ring, and complete packing gland, overall kit, which includes gaskets, alloy ring, complete packing gland, cone screw, bearing balls, cone, and allen key. Please look for spare parts details for the different SVA valve sizes in the spare parts catalog, which is available on dadfoss.com. So let us start the valve assembly using spare parts from these service kits. To assemble the cone assembly, firstly mount the disc spring into the cone, then carefully push the spindle into the cone. Now mount the bearing balls one by one into the cone assembly through the cone screw hole, this by rotating the cone while fixing the spindle. Keep rotating until all bearing balls are mounted. You can see the needed number of bearing balls specified here. Finally, mount and tighten the cone screw. After tightening the cone screw, punch it carefully on one side, as specified here, this to secure it from getting loose over time. Then mount the cone assembly into the bonnet and rotate the spindle clockwise until there is mechanical stop, this indicating that the valve cone assembly is in fully open position. We are now ready to mount the bonnet onto the valve housing. Therefore, do the following. Clean the valve housing and the bonnet. Mount the flat gasket into the housing. Carefully mount the bonnet into the valve housing. Then mount the bonnet bolts and cross tighten them with the torque specified here. Never exceed this specified torque. If the packing gland has been removed for replacement, then before mounting a new one, first mount the alloy ring onto the spindle and into the bonnet. Then mount the packing gland onto the spindle and press it into the bonnet. Rotate the packing gland clockwise and tighten it with the specified torque. Counter hold the spindle while tightening the packing gland. After complete assembly of the SVA shutoff valve, we can now release the back seating. Therefore, rotate the spindle clockwise to lower the valve cone towards the valve housing seat. Keep rotating the spindle until the valve is in the needed position for given operation. We are now ready to finalize the valve assembly by mounting the cap or alternatively the hand wheel if used. If needed, replace the cap gasket. Then carefully mount the cap and tighten it firmly so that it does not get loose. Alternatively, mount and fix the hand wheel to the spindle. After completing the assembly of the SVA shutoff valve, ensure to do the following steps. Connect the valve to the system. Evacuate and charge referring to the system and the valve. Check and ensure that the referent pressure is equalized in the system and the valve. You have now completed service of the SVA shutoff valve, so now you know how to correctly isolate the valve from the system and drain it before service, correctly backseat the valve, correctly pressure equalize the packing gland, correctly replace the packing gland if needed, correctly replace the flat gasket if needed, correctly replace the cone assembly if needed. Correctly replace the backseat seal for sizes DN80 to 200 if needed, and how to correctly recharge the valve and connect it to the system again. All this ensuring a safe and reliable valve operation with minimum service costs. Have a look at the other online learnings about Danfoss valves. Thanks for watching.